Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz 2 post fight. So I got back to Dubai yesterday. And I have to say, I flew over on Friday and it was really uh, a really incredible experience from start to finish, actually. Everyone I met was very friendly. I was actually sat uh, next to a Saudi local on my left hand side and an English guy on my right hand side. Uh, really nice guy. Uh, he was offering to get me tea and coffee and a uh, really, really nice guy. So I don't know what the uh, perceptions people had prior, but lovely people, lovely city, uh, really a fantastic experience. The stadium was, was like nothing I've ever seen before and all the kind of theme park and whatever around it was just was awesome. Anyway, we're here to talk about the fight. So Joshua obviously wins on a very, very wide 12-round decision. And I think he... I actually think he just continued the work. He started in rounds one and two with a bit more movement and really fought as disciplined as he could, preventing himself from kind of saying, what the hell, let's get involved and have a tear-up. There was a point, I think, in the middle rounds, and I, had a, I was very lucky, I had a very, very good seat. So I was really quite close to the ring, and I, you could close enough you could see the fighters' facial expressions just without having to look at the screen. And I, I think maybe round eight, round seven or eight, but it was the middle rounds anyway-ish, he kind of threw his hands to the side as if to throw like a double hook, as if he kind of abandoned the game plan and just wanted to have a tear-up. And thankfully... Uh, I actually covered my eyes at one point because I really wanted the guy to win because he means so much to our sport. He's dedicated himself entirely to, to what he loves and it would have been a real shame, I think, uh, if he'd lost for himself and for the sport. But as it turned out, the bell went and he went back to his corner and kind of reeled himself and reined himself back in. But as far as the performance goes, I thought he boxed very well. I don't think he showed anything entirely new i saw the dwyer video and he was absolutely shocked that joshua could box on the back foot but i think he's he's always had that ability he did it against parker you know it's this isn't new yes he is normally a come forward kind of uh, get them out of there kind of guy but he's always had a nice jab and granted he hasn't had to jab on the back foot but he's definitely done it in prior fights the ability was always there and his jab was really beautiful by the way and especially in the slow motion replays, you see, it, it looked almost like a pawing jab until you saw the replay and it, Ruiz's entire head was snapped back. All of this kind of skin in his face was kind of crumpled together. They looked really, really painful. And of course, the very occasional straight right hand, it looked like it was bone crunching. Now, I don't doubt that Joshua doesn't have Wilder's one punch power, but he de I think out of 10, Wilder would be 10 or 11. I think Joshua is a solid eight. That he hurts, you know, he really, really hurts, and I think Ruiz definitely experienced that and definitely felt that. And I'm a little bit upset, a little bit disappointed to see Ruiz defaulting to blah 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 blah, but no excuses, but blah 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 blah. blah. Just take your loss, man. Exactly the way Joshua did, he got beat. And maybe he had a million and one reasons. We had so many conspiracy theories about why he lost. And he came out and categorically denied everything at the time and said, nope, he was the better man. Leave it at that. And it wasn't really until after this fight, until he was really pushed, that he said, you know, there were a few things. But the entire time to this point, he maintained that no excuse, Ruiz was the better guy. And I would have liked to seen Ruiz just show a bit of uh, humility and, and do the same in return. It's obviously very difficult receiving a loss, I'm sure, but you know, just say, you know what, I got beat. Well done. Doesn't take that much to do. You don't really gain anything by saying, ah, oh, well, I ate too much and I didn't train enough. No one's going to think, oh, okay, well, actually, you're an amazing fighter, and if you'd done this, this would have happened. I don't think there's any form that Ruiz could come in that would have significantly increased his chances of winning. I think that he's always had very slow feet going forward and the only way he could ever really win and the reason it looked so easy the first fight was because Joshua did exactly what he shouldn't do and trade hooks with a hooker. He got caught. He gets, and I think anything after round three was pretty much a wash anyway because he, AJ was clearly heavily concussed. Even the lightest touch, touches were clearly uh, were, were knocking him over in the later rounds. So I, I don't think there's much that Ruiz could have done 
stylistically, even if he was 30 pounds lighter, he's always been very slow going forward. He moves out of distance quite well, actually. Surprisingly, he moves quicker going back than he does going forward. But he he relies on his opponents throwing volume so he can throw with them and counter. He's a front foot counter puncher. That's what he does. So if his opponent isn't really throwing that much and isn't giving him any ammo to counter or to punch with, he's very limited. He was left to following AJ around, and it's easy to see if he was lighter, he could cut the ring off. His technique was what was preventing him from cutting the ring off, not the fact that he was too fat. He was following AJ. He wasn't taking steps to the side. So even if he was a thousand pounds less, he would still be walking in the wrong direction. He'd be walking forward, not in a diagonal or to the side. So I, I would have liked to see him just take his loss and whatever. Bit distasteful, but he seems still like a nice guy. And I'm sure what part of what he said is definitely true. He probably knows he didn't train as hard as he should have. But it is what it is. Joshua boxed very well. He did look quite timid and quite tentative with taking punches. I think that's to be expected considering he was knocked down four times. If anyone's seen Lewis first fight back after the McCall knockout, he was gun shy to the nth degree. He looked very, very scared, very nervous. Uh, and of course, Joshua was taking a direct rematch. So the pressure would have been, you know, tenfold, I'd expect. So huge, huge credit to Joshua for taking the rematch, retooling himself, showing discipline and working his natural advantages. It should have always been a fight that he won easily. Um, Joshua, uh, for me, is a, is a really good boxer. You don't you don't win silver world championships in amateurs if you're a terrible boxer. You can argue that he was gifted the gold medal in the Olympics, but you can't deny the silver medal in the world championships, which for me is maybe even more significant than the gold. But it, with the exception, I don't know. But that's not the Olympics aside. He still had a very solid solid amateur career, and you don't have a career like that if you can't box. Okay. And although Ruiz started boxing much earlier than Joshua, like 10, 10 years earlier than, than Joshua, I don't think he learned any more. He didn't accomplish anywhere near what uh, AJ did in the amateurs. So the foundations was always there for Joshua to win and to control him. It was for Joshua to lose, not really for Ruiz to win. Now don't get me wrong, Ruiz absolutely capitalized on the opportunity made available to him. But it was because of what AJ did wrong more so than what Ruiz did right. And I think going forward... And it's going to be very interesting to see how much of this box and move AJ adopts into his style. I don't think we're going to see a full-on Vladimir conversion. I think he's too in love with fighting. But he's got to be aware that he doesn't have the greatest of chins in the world. I don't think it's as bad as some people say it is. But there's definitely a vulnerability there. And you know, who knows? It could be like a Lewis that his chin seemed to improve with years. Uh, anyone that saw Lewis's last fight against Vitaly Klitschko... He was eating right hands from Vitaly that has knocked so many other people out. And he didn't even flinch. Whereas previously, or in, earlier in Lewis's career, he was hurt, knocked out cold in some cases. So, who knows? I, I don't know what the future for AJ holds. But I think he's going to incorporate at least a little bit of this. It's another dynamic to his game that he can default to if he needs to change up and make uh, changes during a fight. I think the, the dynamic between the three heavyweights is quite interesting. The Fury, Wilder, and Joshua, I mean. I think you have Joshua kind of bang in the middle of a pure puncher, uh, sorry, of a pure boxer in Fury out on the left. You have Wilder out on the right that is just a, a pure puncher that he relies in solely and entirely really on punching and that straight right hand. Whereas Fury has very little knockout power uh, but beautiful head movement, lateral movement, and uh, pumps a very nice jab. And you have Joshua, for me, said right in the middle. So I think on, on the right night, all three could beat each other. I think if you see anyone saying 100% AJ does this, 100% Wilder does this, 100% Fury does this, I think that can only be said if you have a very, very vested interest or a very heavy bias in one of the boxers. To me, I think it's a round robin. You can play around with the percentages if you like. I'm not sure where they sit, about who beats who, how many percent of the time, but I think they all have the capability to beat each other, which makes for absolutely compelling heavyweight division. I'm very excited to see where we go. By the sounds of it, we have a Fury-Wilder fight fairly imminent in February. 
I suppose they'll have a rematch clause, which basically ties them up for the whole year. So once again, it's Joshua going to be fighting mandatories, I think. And um, maybe 21 will get the undisputed, providing... Well, they can't all stay undefeated, right? Because Wilder and Fury are going to be fighting each other. Unless they fight two more draws, which surely is, is very unlikely. Anyway, I need to wrap this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed the fight. By the way, the undercar Povetkin and Hunter for me was the fight of the night. Absolutely compelling to watch again live. These guys just beat lumps out of each other. Really, really interesting and, and really high, quite a high quality fight. It looked a bit scrappy, but uh, these guys were fighting at a pretty high level and it was very enjoyable to watch. I thought a draw was fair, but I wouldn't you know, be angry with anyone that had Hunter ahead by a round, maybe even two. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on the fight. Let me know what you think happens next with any any fight in the division I mean it's such a rich environment now with, with Dubois, Hergovic I think Majidov still uh, needs to get a few more wins under his belt but um, with Hunter, Povetkin White now being cleared and kind of exonerated it's a, it's a heavy and a very hard division and with the three kings now positioned relatively well who knows what, what how it pans out? Who knows what the landscape will look like in 2022? I'm curious to think who, who might be top by the end of 2022. For me, I think Daniel Dubois might be our sleeping giant. I think he could be uh, one to watch. He could also be outboxed by somebody like Fury, but I think he has uh, maybe the highest potential ceiling of the kind of upcomers. Of course, there's Usyk as well. I actually met Usyk at the airport. I met Usyk and Chizora at the airport. And tell you what, Chisora is much smaller than Usyk in real life. I was surprised how big Usyk was. His arms were as thick as one of my legs. Really big. I'm like 5'11", so I'm not a small guy. But Usyk towered over me. and he, I think he must be 6'3", 6'4". But Chisora felt like the same height. And if Chisora can handle himself at heavyweight, I have, I have no difficulty believing that Usyk can too. But we'll see. Let me know your thoughts. Take care, folks.